Hey CrossFitters, have you guys ever wondered how Natural Selection CrossFit got their start in the Tri-Cities? Or if any of their coaches have ever taken their level one from Coach Greg Glassman himself? Find out the answer to this and many more questions up next. Hey guys, Jason here with TC Box Crawl. I'm here with Leo and Mary Barillas. Hopefully I said that right. We're at Natural Selection CrossFit and we're going to unpack everything that there is to know about Natural Selection. So let's start off. We'll just kind of get into background. Uh, a little bit about yourself, you know, sports wise, you know, how you grew up with sports, if you were competitive, that kind of thing. So, you go first. Um, I didn't really grow up playing a ton of sports. Um, middle school, regular volleyball, baseball, not a whole heck of a lot in high school. Um, my family was always outside kind of doing stuff, but I wasn't super competitive, nor was I in college sports at all. Okay. Um, I did sports throughout middle school, uh, wrestling, football, uh, soccer, and then I went into high school and I did wrestling, football, and then uh, when I got out of <coughs> high school, went straight into the military. So then more rook runs and hiking than anything else. Okay. So, but nothing collegiate, nothing crazy like that. Were either of you competitive? I mean, brother, sister, siblings, anything like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was competitive with a lot of my friends in high school. I was competitive uh, definitely in the military. I mean, I always wanted to be one of the best that I was in my platoon. So, yeah, I'm definitely competitive in the military. Um, Not um, really. I mean, I had three older brothers, so we would... They'd fight beat, and wrestle, yeah, beat her but up. Yeah. Not, I couldn't like beat them. So, so you learned kind of that that comp at least that others I were competing yeah. with you yeah. and kind of how to keep up, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. competing with her, but not. Yeah, she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so how far did you guys that take you? I mean, just I mean, did you have aspirations of doing something maybe like college or or beyond, or was it just uh, you knew it after high school? Man, I'm done. This is it. Well, for me, I knew that I was going to the military after high school. I I had enlisted into the military a year prior. So my whole senior year, I was in the debt program. Okay. So I achieved a rank already before I even went in. And then, I mean, I excelled at boot camp. I was, uh, I was a squad leader in boot camp, graduated with honors. I mean, yeah. Was, awesome. Yeah. So I like to be, like to be in the front if I can be. Right on. Yeah. Okay. So CrossFit, uh, it's one of those things that people, uh, way back in the day, I know you guys started kind of a lot earlier than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And back then it was a lot more difficult to discover, find, hear about that kind of thing. So where did you first hear about it? Like website, blog, crazy friend? So I have kind of a special uh, bond with CrossFit. It's a little bit uh, closer to me. So Greg Glassman donated his first CrossFit gym, CrossFit Santa Cruz, to the Marines. And so that's the gym that I started at and ran. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so it was called um, The Warehouse. And uh, it you was actually on, ran that gym? Yeah, I was at CrossFit Camp Pendleton, so I was a combat instructor, right, for uh, for the Marines. And um, and then I started, to, they give you breaks so that you don't want to uh, murder the platoon that you have because you're surrounded by 120, you know, teenage boys that don't listen. And so after being them with, with them for like four to six months, it's like, you know, you can't take them more. So they give you a break. And so my break, they threw me in. They asked me where I wanted to go. Um, and I told them I wanted a break so I can hang out with my wife and have some time because it's, we're going, I mean, we're doing 18 hour days when we're combat instructors. And so I asked, easy job, nine to five. They threw me in a CrossFit gym. And so it was just this big warehouse and had bumper plates and PVC and all this other stuff. And I didn't know what the hell it was, you know? And so I started YouTubing and then, uh, found out what it was and started, I got certified. Wait, so you're at the original CrossFit box and you're YouTubing how to CrossFit. Yeah, right, and so I- That's I, crazy. Yeah, and so it's a little different, my story, my path of CrossFit. And so <clears throat> Jimmy Letchford, um, Greg Glassman's right-hand man, was one of my captains, right? And so he's Greg Glassman's right-hand man to this day still. Tells him where to go, how to do things, that type of stuff. Keep, keeps him on schedule. Um, uh, so, and then we had a bunch of other Marines that are really good friends that are you know, they work for headquarters now and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, your experience with CrossFit is a lot different, I think, probably than, than most, most yeah. CrossFitters you're yeah. ever going to hear. So, how did you hear about CrossFit, Mary? Um, <laughs> I heard about CrossFit. He was like obsessed with it. He was on up all night watching videos. Um, he actually had me do my first workout was Tabata squats, 
And then the so next... So you guys were together even way back then. Yeah. We've been together since I was 13. Whoa! Yeah. So We've been together for over half her life. So he was 15 so. and I was 13 when we got together. So yeah. high school sweethearts. Wow. My dad had to sign for me to get married because I was only <laughs> 17. so cool. Yeah. yeah. We've been together forever. So. so I heard about CrossFit through him. He had been looking up a ton of videos. Um, and he actually had me do uh, Tabata squats. And then the next day I had a flight to uh, Virginia and I swore I would never do CrossFit again. I hated him, I was pissed, I was over it. And that was my first experience with CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, she definitely didn't like it. I mean, I would stay up because of the hours that we had on my days off, I would <laughs> stay up until like 3 a.m. just YouTubing, trying to learn more so that I can coach. Because uh, the Marines certified me, like they paid for me to go get my certification, my level one. Okay. And so then after that, it just snowballed. I just, I fell in love with it. Love hate relationship. I hate, I like pain. So how, when did you get your your first cert then? Uh, my level one was back in 2007. So that's back. Was that when Greg was still teaching? Greg was still teaching. Yeah. How cool. So is I that? had I had Jason Kalipa um, as one of mine. I got certified with Annie Thor's daughter, same class. Um, yeah, but she has way bigger abs than I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> she has way bigger abs than most than guys. Than most guys, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, wow. So, yeah, you're, I mean, your experience just with CrossFit in the very beginning is way different than different. most folks. That's yeah. super cool. I think that's why we're so passionate about it. So, I mean, where to go from there? I mean, so you're down there at at the warehouse, yep. and you're, you're sort of getting into that. I mean, I imagine... You know, knowing from my military background, you're trying to be super focused on being the absolute best instructor you can be. Correct. Doing all the videos, and there really wasn't that much material available back then other than I mean, online it, content, right? It, it was really big. I, I loved back in the day because it was open sourced, right? Everything's supposed to be open sourced still, but now it's like you have, you have things like mobility that are being paid for, right? So it's not so much open source like it used to be. Back then it was like, hey, if someone knew something that worked, they put it on YouTube, or it was on crossfit.com and you had all the movement exercises kind of like they still do it you know but um but i mean now you know, have to kind of pay for the journal and all that other stuff when it used to be kind of free so right on so it's it's changed a little bit but yeah back then it was just i mean we went to certs uh i got two certs when i was in the military and then it just kind of kept snowballing i kept going to certs after that um if i would have played my cards right i could be on the you know crossfit staff right now but <laughs> Uh, other things in sure. mind. So. Hey, life life yeah, takes life, us in life, crazy so. directions. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so rather than you sort of making that, that I found CrossFit, I've done some crazy workouts, and you know now I think I may want to coach, it went straight into, you're a coach, yep. you're running a program, go figure out what CrossFit is. Yeah, pretty much. That's kind of <laughs> how it was. And, and that's why when people ask me, how long have you been doing CrossFit, I say, well, I've been doing and coaching for 10, like 10 to 11 years now. So... That's awesome. Same thing. So I'm guessing your experience with switching from doing CrossFit to, hey, honey, let's try this try this cool thing I want you to do and kill you versus, okay, now I'm doing it more regularly or, hey, I need help and I want you to coach. I mean, so what was your, I guess, transition from, from trying a workout and never wanting to do it again to either doing it more or, or kind of what was your, your journey through CrossFit? Um, I did not like it. I, I, we'd been to the gym a couple times with him um, on CrossFit Camp Pendleton, and it just wasn't my thing. And it wasn't until here when I kind of fell in love with like the camaraderie and the community, and that's what like made me really fall in love with it. Um, I had no passion for lifting or realizing how strong my body was or anything like that until. I had people that were pushing me and encouraging me and motivating me, and for me, it was the community. Yeah, All right. I get that. So, let's kind of we're gonna have to take a step back, obviously, because we're gonna <laughs> jump around, I guess. So, so you're in the military. Obviously, there's a separation point, and you're in California, and and some for some reason you guys came back here with some family. Yeah. So once we got out of the military, I wanted to stay in California because. I knew CrossFit was huge there, and I, that's where I wanted to open up a gym by myself, right? And uh, kind of so that was the goal thing. right out of the military. Is right I out of the military, do this yeah. She, I told her, I said, hey, when I when we were getting ready to get out, I was because I didn't want to move back. She's like, well, you know, families in Washington, so she wanted to raise the kids here, and that's why we got out. I mean, had 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 my son Carson, and 
So we decided to get out and... Uh, we know too many people that had been on <coughs> so many different deployments and they never knew their children. And yeah. it just after eight years, it just wasn't the life that we wanted. Yeah, to I didn't want that life either. So so, so we decided we're going to get out and we had. I had told her, I was like, well, when I get out, I want to do open CrossFit, right? Because I mean, me and my buddies would travel all in California when it was $20 to compete, you know, and I mean, we had four guys that were in the military together and we'd go and compete at these competitions. So I fell in love with it pretty deeply. And then, uh, and then when we got out, it was kind of like a, like a breakup, I guess, you know, and we moved back and I was kind of a little, I had, I had a little bit of, you know, resentment towards her just because of that. But, um, I mean, I, I, I think it turned out, turned out for better. So, um, got out when I got out going from 18 hour days to zero hour days of work um, <coughs> it was driving me crazy right and we were living with her mom at the time because we were trying to look for a place and so then we en I ended up calling fallout right and uh, I was at the time it was Ben Lark and was the uh, owner right and so I started you know I, I said hey you know I have XX excerpts I've been doing it for this long do you guys need help coaching and I said you don't have to pay me I just want to volunteer just to fill my day, so I started coaching their, started coaching their morning classes. I think there's five and or there's six and seven a.m. I think is what they had at the time, and then from there I'd go back home after I'd coach, and so then I was like, well, after doing Fallout for maybe about I don't know, a few weeks I think, you know, I started calling around, seeing what other gyms were in town, and Natural Selection had just <coughs> opened up. Uh, Aaron Clem, uh, Trevor White, and Eric Goff had opened them up, had opened this one up. And I mean, there was a tiny little gym, you know, I think they'd been open up for like 28 days or 30 days, a little, like, a little under a month. And so then I came on board and uh, started volunteering there. You know, I called and I talked to Trevor and he's like, yeah, dude, we could use the help. So I started, started coaching there also and they loved what they saw. And uh, I had already told both gyms, you know, eventually once we find a house and we get settled in, we're going to step back and open up our own facility. And so then Trevor, Aaron and Eric decided to to bring me into theirs and so so we op they, they gave me 25 percent stake for for at work equity and so i worked my way in and uh i left i left all out and i mean now we're the sole owners we bought trevor and aaron out first and then eric and now it's just us right on so, so talk to me about when you guys came up here obviously he's doing it's kind of some soul searching going around through crossfit trying to get in what was your transition from again, not really liking it to I'm gonna I'm gonna support the business? Was it a business decision or was yeah. it a you well, just well it fell was just it? Um, like I so we were going to school full time um, and he was uh, volunteering a lot coaching and so to be with him and to you know be around him we had the baby um, I ended up kind of going to um, the old 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 gym very first natural behind Sam's um, and helping him with the paperwork you know, yeah. and putting members and helping him with that kind well, of it was, stuff. It was a lot. I would do the paperwork. I would do the website. I would do the programming. I would do the coaching for the majority of the part. So I was there from morning to late. Right. And so then she started saying, hey, let me do this and this and I can take that over. And that way you have more time to take hang care of the other stuff us. and hang out. Right. right. And that, yeah. And so then so she started helping me that way. And so she started hanging out at the at the uh, gym more, at the box more. And and I think that's where she started to fall in love with the community a little bit more in that aspect of. of, of so this is this is good. the part that the community doesn't get to see, where it's, uh, hey, I come and I show up for an hour, and this is everything's great, and yeah. you guys, I mean, from literally dawn to dusk, yeah, you know, you're putting Long in hours. twenty hour days. Oh, it yeah. was like in the beginning when we went to school full time, and oh, he was, was working full time. It was bad. There were so many tears. I mean, we wouldn't get out of class until 10 o'clock at night with I'd the kids and, and then homework for feel like two, really two, horrible two parents hours, yeah. and it was not great yeah, was in not the beginning. Wow. So, how long yeah. did that how long did that go before it started to I guess your schedule finally started to figure itself out and get a little bit more normal or has it has it ever really gotten normal? I don't think or? that our I don't think that we've we got a decent schedule until we were at our Third location. Third location, I would say, yeah. Wow. So how many years in is that? Oh man, that's like. That was 2012. We're on eight, so that's about four years, yeah. 2012, yeah. Four, yeah, four. We, yeah, so it four was about years. four years. I think four years ago. So like going to law school or something. It was, it was really bad. I mean, well, yeah, we, were well, we were on, we were, we were, we were living time. in my parents' basement. We were going to school full time. We were. Yeah, it was really bad. 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 Yeah, it was really bad.
on food stamps. We weren't making money. Like yeah. it was just well, a had, really had, big I struggle. Had, I had military pay because I had leave, so that was kind of the the money that we were using to support ourselves and our savings. We got money we from sure. the the GI Bill. Yeah, it, and that yeah, was that type of stuff. So kind of what we lived off. It kind of offset offset like our expenses and stuff. For the so first four years. Pretty rough wow. the first few, few years, yeah, coming out. That's but. crazy. So it's not glorious, guys, <laughs> no. opening up a gym. It takes a lot of hard work and yeah. effort. That is yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, I've, I know I've heard stories, but that's just... Yeah, it's pretty rough. I mean, you got to love what you do yeah. to put that kind but, of time in. But, I mean, now in. it's completely different now, you know. Now it's... Got, it's worth it now. I mean, kids, we get to bring yeah. our dog, and our kids get to be here, and... As a mom of a, a young girl with the body image that kids see all the time, especially girls, like I'm so, so, so thankful that my daughter gets to grow up not worrying about weight and just seeing like strong, capable women. It's so much more worth it to me to go through that struggle and to just put that positive mentality in her. And yeah. She has her own barbell and she wants to work out and like that means a lot to me versus um, just working like a nine to five job. Yeah. Sure. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I I totally know what you're talking about. I have a daughter and I think the same thing and I try and push and encourage and we don't use words like, you know, somebody's fat or yeah. whatever. It's like down. it's just yeah, it's just oh, yeah. no body image stuff at all. It's just strong, healthy, you know, use the good words and so oh, that's, yeah. that's really cool. So the fun question, what is CrossFit? I mean, I always, so I always revert back to Greg Glassman, right? When, when people ask him and his answer is always come try it out, right? You gotta, CrossFit is for me mainly CrossFit is the community, right? Um, it, I think, I think a lot of people worry about too much about, Hey, the finances, the equipment, um, what they're going to do, the programming they're doing. Um, and I've heard people say, if you take care of your athletes, they're going to take care of you, right? And so for me, it's the community. I mean, we, everybody in there, we know their first name, last name, kids' names. We know what time they come. We know what music they like, you know. So we try to make sure that they're taken care of, whether it's mobility needs, strength needs, whatever they ask. And so... Emotional. By, yeah, emotional <laughs> needs, things. So when they have rough days, you know, we've, we've been through divorces. We've, we've wed people in our facility. You know, I've gotten ordained to marry someone. Um, wow. Yeah, we've, we've done weddings in here. And, uh, so, I mean, it's just, it, it's them, you know. The community is what I think really, truly is CrossFit. And it's seeing it from what it used to be to where it is kind of right now a little bit more mainstream. Uh, it's, it's changed a bit, but I think that a lot of facilities that are newer forget, like they don't know that, that aspect of true CrossFit. And so when you do see it at the games, when you see athletes come around, that last person cheering, that's what CrossFit is, right? So, um but if you really want to taste what CrossFit is, you just have to try it out. Let's try it out. Anything? No, nothing to add. I mean, just I, I, I just, I, I love the community here. Like, yeah. that wasn't what, it wasn't the weights, it wasn't the hard workouts, all that sucked, but it was like the people encouraging me to come back and motivating me and yeah. that's what makes CrossFit, CrossFit. Oh yeah. Right on. So let's get into maybe a little bit about, uh, again, I know we're kind of jumping around, but uh, maybe the coaching aspect of it. So when uh, people come into a box, generally the first thing that they're going to experience, you know, is that, that first initial contact with a, with a coach, mm -hmm. maybe you, maybe somebody else. Um, so uh, when they first walk in, actually, let's, let's back up and say, um, I'm a new client. I've, I've done some research on the internet. I've uh, made some phone calls. Maybe I've watched some videos online. And I think I'm going to go check out Natural Selection. And so they walk through the door and they know nothing about CrossFit other than what they've been able to either see on TV, CrossFit games, okay. you know, and that's it. got its own backstory altogether. Um, but they walk in, they say, okay, you know, hey, I'm thinking about joining. Uh, or I want to try it, what can they expect from natural selection walking in the door saying, you know, okay, we're going to, you're going to try a free workout and here's what it's going to look like. I mean, from, from the minute they walk in the door and talk to somebody, 
what can I expect as a as a client? So we try a, we try to make our our intro session right our very first session for everybody very available. Um, we host our intros on Saturdays after we do our our uh, open gym session at 11:30, right? And so when they come in, we, if if they can't do it on on a Saturday, we schedule them for an appointment. Um, if we're coaching a class or if we have two coaches here available, then we'll take them right then and there if they're ready to jump on the wagon, right? And uh, so our intro, we basically sit down with them for about 20 to 25 minutes and we just go over what CrossFit is. We don't even, we don't even go out to the gym. We kind of sometimes we'll take them in the office or we'll sit off to the side if there's a class going around so that they can kind of experience it. Um, and we, we, try to, we try to set people up depending on where they're at in their fitness level or their health level, right? Because we have some people who come in, they're a little heavier set, and they're like, hey, my goal is to lose weight. So then we'll set them up with an appointment if they are available during a time when we know that we have athletes that are in the same boat, right? Because sure. the one thing that people don't want to see is elite athletes working out. They're not elite. So right. we try to set them up to when they come in and, and see someone in the same boat as them, working hard, scaling the movements down, and that way they, they kind of depress a little bit, they get comfortable, they're like, okay, they're doing it, I can do this, right? And so then we go into ask, answering questions, asking about injuries if they have any, um, and then just teaching them what CrossFit is, how we work it, you know, we talk a little bit about our programming, a little bit about uh, how the classes run, and then we go in there and we warm them up like we would for a class, um, stretch them out, and then we go over movements for their workout, which we do very down dirty. We used to do Tabata, but then we found out that Tabata kind of leaves people unable to, like to use a toilet or walk for two weeks, right? <laughs> so we changed gears. Now we, we hit whole body and we went with baseline, right? It's something that everybody that has been doing CrossFit knows it's been sure. around for a long, long time, right? Test the lungs, test body weight stuff, uh, no external weight. So, and so we test that. And then after we're done, you know, most of them are done, some puke, whatever it may be, right? For each. Um, and then then we, we stretch them out and then we set them up. If they want to sign up, great. If they don't, we encourage them to come to our Saturdays for free. We've had people come into our Saturdays for free for a years, while. right? And then some of them sign up for a month and then they stop because of work and then they come back on Saturday and then they sign up for another month and we never, we never turn them away, you know? Saturdays are fun. So, so let's change gears a little bit and we'll say, okay, now you've got somebody who has some CrossFitting experience. They walk in the door. What's their experience like? You want to take they're still, they're going to get a handshake and a smile and they're still going to go through our intro session. So regardless of if you've been crossfitting for years or you've never crossfitted, um, each box is individually ran, hours, pricing, schedule, programming. Um, and so we like them to know kind of our vibe and our feel here. And, you know, we support everybody and, you know, all the positivity and that kind of stuff. So it doesn't matter what your fitness level is you're still going to do the intro session and that gives us as coaches a good idea of where you're at physically um when people do come in for uh intro and they do baseline we don't let people do regular pull-ups they're always doing scaling pull-ups or ring rows um just for safety i mean we just we try to make sure that we can uh, assess their fitness levels by doing baseline yeah so and even though everybody's <clears throat> if, even though they're a little bit more experienced or they're a little bit more elite athlete, I think the reason we also do intros regardless with them is because it gives us an opportunity to actually get to know them as a person. Sure. So, and I think for our facility, building bonds with the people is more important than, than uh, selling a membership. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so how, how young, how old, I mean, is there a range that, uh, you know, clients can come in and work out? I mean, what's the what's the age range? Well, I mean, we have three-year-olds that do CrossFit Kids, um, all the way into I think our oldest has been 76 that we've had, and I mean they've all come to the classes. We uh, we've tried Silver's classes. We called it Silver's, right? Masters classes. We called it Silver's. Um, uh, we tried it one time, and it was pretty popular. But I mean, it just kind of. Faded, faded kind of quick. So, and, and I think it's because the reason that we don't have a lot of specialized classes like teens and silvers is because people like to hang out with each other, right? regardless if they're older or younger. Uh, the, the the youngest we can have on the floor is 12 years old, right? According to CrossFit. So, we have CrossFit kids and CrossFit. Uh, we call it bigs and littles. So we have the bigger kids, six to seven, or sorry, six to 12, six to 11, and then the littles are three to three to six, three to five. And then everybody else is just in regular CrossFit classes. And awesome. So 
and they love they love to be you know, in the same community. Some people, when they first start, they're kind of timid because they they're like, hey, you know, I don't want to keep my partners down because they're, sl they're I'm slower. But we modify it to where they can move just as fast. You know, make it a little heavier for the ones who are good and the ones who are new. Just lighten it up. So, right on. Yeah. Three to five. That's got to be fun to watch. Yeah. Mm. How long do they go for? 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. Wow. And I mean, the, the training is so, it's, it's just CrossFit kids. We, we don't reinvent the wheel here. I mean, CrossFit does a great job. I mean, they have a, a table of gurus coming up with this stuff, right? So right. there's no point in reinventing the wheel. So we go off of what CrossFit kids is. We program what CrossFit says. And so Coach Jessica does a great job running those little kids. You know, she sometimes, it's like it's hurting like, cats. It's like hurting cats or <laughs> chickens, you know? But, but yeah, it's fun to watch and it's super cute. <laughs> so, so how long has that kids program been going? A year now. A year? Okay. We did it. We used to do it in the summers um, and people loved on it off. on and off right in the summers. And then, and then as people started to <laughs> want it more regularly, we incorporated it. But <coughs> it's so not long enough to where you actually seen kids come from the program into the adult program? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. We have some kids in the bigs that are borderline and then so they go into the regular class afterwards. But... But no, not not like seeing like a five year old, you know, all the way to the to the adult class. But that that'll be cool one day to watch, you know. So. We're excited for that. The yeah. the CrossFit Kids program is actually growing significantly. Yeah. Um, we offer morning and afternoon classes for the kids. Uh, the littles get to do it two times a week, and the bigs get to do it three times a week. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a really really a fun class to watch. The little kids are so stinking cute yeah. when they're doing all their warm ups, and it's really fun to watch. Right. Yeah. And you guys also have a kids area that's always packed. I've, I've oh, yeah. Yeah. experienced. I think, I think the most we've had in there is 30 kids at once. Yeah, we just it's crazy. corral them. Yeah, wow. we try to herd them, but it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. They kind of know where they're allowed to be and where they're yeah. not. I mean, we have the kids' room, but sometimes they'll play out in the living or the, the living room. Lobby. The lobby, um, or they're allowed to go in the back, but they all know our rules on safety and yeah. where they're allowed to be and what they're allowed to do. And, and if they don't, there is punishments. Yeah. They get, wow. They get burpees. For burpees. I was going to say, it's got to be burpees. Oh, all, all burpees. the burpees. We've, well, the bigger kids actually turn to like, like burpees now. They like kind of like, eh. So now we make them do wall sits. So I was going to say, that's wall not a punishment anymore. Yeah, we can make them do wall sits or sprints, yeah. So, right on. Yeah. All right, guys. So we've talked a little bit about programming, history, uh, kind of briefly touched on coaching. Uh, I want to unpack that just a little bit more. So in your opinion, um, what makes a good coach? Um, oh, I think there's a lot of aspects to that. Uh, but I think... The main thing is making sure that you actually care about your athletes, right? If, if you care that they make a change or that they get better, um, I think that you're doing a good job, even if you can't really, you can learn you, you know, new tools and new, new tricks to get people to learn things, but you can't, you can't teach someone who doesn't genuinely care about someone to care about someone, you know? So I think that, I think that that's probably for me just one of the biggest things when I interview coaches, that's what I look for. You know, really. Yeah, I think that we can teach anybody to how to coach a kettlebell swing or a push jerk or whatever, but you can't teach somebody to be a good, genuine human being. So yeah. um, that is the number one thing that we look for in a coach. Okay. So when you when you look at you talk about interviewing coaches, is that something where uh, in your experience it comes from uh, somebody that like a member in the box to say, hey, I'm interested. Do you grab somebody and say, hey, I think you'd be a really great coach? Or is it somebody that actually calls you up and says, hey, I've been a coach you know, for five years. I'm looking for a place. Uh, so I'm moving in. I mean, what? Both. I mean, all, all of them. I've had, uh, we've had coaches that come from the facility and you know, they start as members and, and they want to be a coach. And so we, we help them with the transition into being a coach. And then we put them in our two-month two internship, minimum two-month internship program. And then from there, if they pass our, our criteria then they can become a coach um, and then we I actually have an interview uh, in two weeks with a guy that's moving into town who from his resume that I got hasn't owned a CrossFit gym but he's owned two facilities and he wants to kind of transfer into the CrossFit world and he has his level one and so he's trying to make the switch and so I have an interview with, interview with him next in a couple of weeks and and uh, so we'll just see kind of where he's at you know and I have questions that I ask him and and just to kind of see what Kind of a person he is. Yeah, kind of just kind of see what kind of person he is and okay. see if he would be a good fit. Because right now our 
our coaching staff. We, we, we had 12 at one point a long time ago. We cut it down from there, and then uh, we just cut it down in the past year and a half again some more, and now we're down to six coaches, and I'm trying to really focus on those coaches, you know, with their quality of coaching instead of the quantity that I have. Okay. So. Is it important for the coaching staff to work on things like continuing education, or is it more important for you that they are really just in tune with the clients and giving them the things that they need, or is there a mix? Both, yeah. We, we do quarterly, in, uh, quarterly um, evaluations, right? I have this checklist, and it has to do with camp firing. It has to do with um, tactical cues or, you know, visual cues, they have to hit all the points that we need for a level two, level three coach is what we're trying to aim for right now. Um, and so if if they're not camp firing with an athlete or, or very first thing that it says on there, welcome everybody, right? And know everybody by name in that class and make sure that you're good. And if you don't, you go and introduce yourself to that person again. Or if it's someone new, you introduce yourself regardless. So that's the very first thing that they have to do. I mean, and it ends at the end, camp firing, shooting the shit with them, you know, you know, while they're stretching, doing mobility, if, if we have that time, or announcing, hey guys, we have X, X, and X coming up, you know, the throwdown or whatever it may be, and say, come check it out. If you guys are timid to do a competition, well then maybe this is your chance or whatever it may be. But but we want them to be both, you know, we want them to be good coaches and we want them to be, I guess, just good human beings to other people. Okay. So we, um, we evaluate movements and make sure that they that we're all coaching the same movement, very similar. Same standards. With the same standards. Um, and then we also will, yeah, sit there and chat. Um, all of our, we have a, a goal sheet that our members can fill out and they kind of pick a coach to keep them accountable. And our coaches enjoy it when members choose them. It's nothing that they <laughs> paid for. It's nothing, it's just something that they get to do on their own. Yeah, it's the And it's because our coaches are so genuine and because they, do take a notice in these members and so it's definitely a combination of the both yeah <clears throat> yeah and it's kind of fun because they they make it a competition they they want to see who has more athletes picking them to help them with their yeah. movements right so it becomes a little competitive with the coaching staff but <coughs> but i mean that's good it drives them right um and so that's it's something we really like and i mean i, I i've been to a lot of facilities where where the coaches are one one is there or two are there because they're on shift um I can't get rid of our coaches. It's it's sometimes they're all six of us are here and I'm like, I don't know why you guys are all here, but I love that they're here. So it's a good time. The coaches generally were, were, will work out two or three times together, all of us, just because we all genuinely enjoy, enjoy being here yeah. and enjoy each, other, enjoy each other's, each other's, other's company. company yeah. um, we don't have to tell people like, hey, come wad with us or come to this event. Like our coaches want to be there and that is such a great feeling. Yeah. Right on. That's super awesome. I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, so you kind of already touched a little bit on specialty programs. You've tried a few. They don't seem to really stick, or most people just like to be in the general class. Um, the one thing you are doing right now is CrossFit Kids, which I'm guessing you're trying to hope that sticks around and maybe yeah. maybe be the one program that you're looking to, to pump that up. Um, yeah. And you've tried Masters. Masters didn't really work. Uh, not at the um, time. Is there anything else specialty that you've tried or that you want to try, like uh, Olympic lifting? So or? we we have an oldie class. We offer it two times a week. We offer it um, in the afternoon on Fridays at 4 p.m. because a lot of people are getting off of work and it's their like you know their time to come play around. Um, and Andy, Coach Andy, runs that. And then we offer it on Wednesday nights at 7:30, and <clears throat> people love that too. Um, so we've been doing oldie for quite a while, um, and we've. Thought, talk, have thrown around doing a gymnastics only piece and we've talked around you know doing an endurance class or something like that but um, it's just we feel that if you come to the classes and you pay attention and you're not just doing social hour right while we're trying to instruct is that possible to I do mean, social hour during I mean, cross class it's crazy it's <laughs> crazy during those but, <laughs> but um yeah if you actually pay attention you, you'd be surprised what you pick up right a lot of people are like some people don't understand or don't hear the things that we say sometimes because they're they're elsewhere, and I get that this is their time, their hour to depress. It's their their funnest hour of the day, so we try not to harp on them too much if we can, you know, and just make it fun. So, right on. Yeah. Okay. But I think eventually we'll add more. Talk to me a little bit about your community or or community in general. Um, people outside the outside of CrossFit, uh, you know, they hear that word maybe, or they don't quite understand, you know, the the 
integral part. I mean, personally, I can't think of community and CrossFit as a separate entity. It's, 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 I mean, they're, yeah. they're one and the same. They're weaved together. But, but it's really important that people outside, maybe that are looking at CrossFit or at natural selection and saying, I'm thinking about going there, you know, what is that, you know, community, what does that mean to you guys? You know, how do you encourage that, support it, you know, develop it? Well, for us, um, a prime example, um, not the best situation, but um, one of our members, their son took their own life uh, in December and the support that they had from the entire gym was so overwhelming. Um, the gym took care of food for them for months. It was during Christmas, Christmas time, so the gym came oh. together and we bought all their gifts for them. For their, the, you know, we had them give us, we had them give us Christmas lists. We bought their their gifts for them. I mean, we had so many athletes in that. We had what a, can they I had to, to open up another and... section when we went to the funeral because there was so many people in there. I mean, it was just yeah. The family actually ended up. Uh, the, the situation happened on a Monday night, and they came to the gym on Wednesday afternoon, and I offered to open it privately for them just to like give them that ability to come in here and get frustration out. And they wanted to be around the community and they wanted all the support from the members and um, it was very emotional, but it really, really helped them get through that situation. And it really brought our community together even more than it was. And it was emotional and amazing just to see how many people cared. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Is there anything that you can think of maybe that you do to, to cultivate that, that community? Man, I know you guys do stuff, but like charity events, programs, I mean, so we always get do, together, we do barbecues, things, you know, stuff like that. We do the like things. Yeah, we do a lot of barbecues. I mean, barbecues are something that people just love doing, right? We have, we have a fridge full of beer in the, in the office. So if, if people are here on a Friday or if they've had a rough day and after they work out, they want to hang out and have a beer, you know, they, they go on there and they grab a beer and they just sit and, you know, mingle with whoever. Talk, I think it's kind friends. of like lead by example. Like our coaches generally hang out with members. We generally hang out with members, you know, all the time. Outside and of the gym. All the or, wedding that we're going to this weekend. Yeah. Today, half of it is CrossFit members. Yeah. Over half of it's all from the facility, you know, and it's all a group of people that know the uh, bride and groom. Yeah. So, wow. so, and so, I mean, we'd be doing an open gym right now and we'd be doing intros right now, but we closed it down. All the coaches, all the coaches are, are going, you know, so it's. Things like that, I think, is this that we take the time to drive to Prosser to go see our members get married, or or like Mary was saying, a funeral. I mean, on a weekend when we could be doing something else with the kids or whatever. Sure. You know, that's that takes precedence to us. So going to Cabo for a member's wedding. Going to Cabo. God, that was so rough. rough. Oh, I was Such gonna say. Rough... <laughs> oh, no. Things we do, things for, we our do our for our community. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, we barbecue and I mean, we do that type of stuff. We do Murph. We we try to make our events, you know, our fundraisers. Big, right? The competition that we do every year, the throwdown. I mean, it's yeah, talk for, a little bit about that. You've got a competition coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, atomic so throwdown. July 14th is the date that we're set for this year. Yeah, the Atomic Throwdown. Um, so the past every year we tried to, we when we started it, we our, our mind was set was to help different foundations every year. Um, so we had a different theme every year. Uh, first year we helped at risk at risk youth teens, and then year. Two, three, four, and two, three, four. Two, this three, is four fine. was uh, domestic violence, right? Because they wanted us to keep helping them, so we we continued to help them, and they helped us out. And then we switched gears this year. We we're going with uh, with helping vets with PTSD, and so we're helping now. Um, I love that. By the service helping, peace. yeah, Service Peace Warriors, this foundation that trains dogs to find out if you're having a panic attack or if you're thinking suicidal thoughts or that type of stuff and so they come and they comfort you or or they do whatever they need to do to you know kind of calm you down and... yeah so it's 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 really cool and i mean they're they're local they're they're well not local local but they're in a, in um geez they're up north i can't think of the town they're right up north you know like a hour drive from here so um it's a great it's a great foundation i think it's, it's something that people overlook all the time unless we're doing murph or we're doing you know veterans day or or fourth of july you know that's when people think of the vets but they don't think of them right now when they're still over there and know? a lot of that money that go you know when people sign up for murph a lot of that money goes to so many different outside sources that we're really excited that the money's going to stay local yeah so the money that we raise will go to them and provide it 
dog for a local, local people member. Yeah. Um, the domestic violence stuff, that is all for local people. Um, so we try to keep money, the fundraising, all of that stuff within our community. Very cool. Yeah. You've known that this is fifth year now fifth year, for the yeah. Atomic? And so that competition, I mean, obviously I'm sure that's taught you a lot about community and logistics and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but um, what, uh, you know, going back to that community piece, uh, what has that done for the community? I mean, is it, uh, I'm assuming it probably started out smaller and it's been getting a little bit bigger. Yeah. What's that, uh, I mean, what's the vibe you guys get off of? I mean, it's cool because this is the first year that we have people coming in from Canada to compete. We have four teams that are coming in from Canada. So the word spreading, right, uh, it's kind of branching out like a little wildfire. Uh, and so it's, 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 we get to meet new people, right? For us, it's cool that we get to meet new people or boxes that we haven't been able to go to because we're, we're here or we have life going on. So it's, it's cool that we, we get to meet that, the outside community. and. And we get to stay in touch with them in that way. You know, the following year we get to give them the invite, or if we do something else, we give them the invite. So and it gives cool. people like an opportunity to see what CrossFit is. So um, we'll, we'll have a ladder again this year. Leo just released that workout, and I think that ladders are kind of more for the spectators because um, you know, getting that PR and seeing somebody struggle and the whole crowd cheering them on, like there is no greater feeling than that. Yeah, and um, for sure. so that's just really, really awesome for everybody to be able to watch and. You know, obviously the athlete getting that PR or hitting that lift that they normally don't lift, um, it's just awesome. It's priceless. Yeah, very cool. Let's fast forward a little bit. Um, we've talked a lot about, you know, where you guys came from, establishing the gym. Obviously, it's grown. It's moved several different locations. Um, I think this is your is this your fourth fourth, fourth, location. fourth location. And how yeah. much how how big is this? How square footage? Uh, total, it's eighty five hundred square feet. Okay. Good size space, lots of equipment. Um, I know you've had at least one regional athlete through mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, so super experienced from back in the beginning. I mean, obviously the very first CrossFit gym up to now. So you've got a you've got a unique perspective on CrossFit, kind of where it started to fast forward. You know, moving states. Uh, moving locations, kind of seeing what it is in the community. Talk about a little bit about maybe some of the trends that you've seen. I think you touched on that. From what CrossFit maybe was, um, kind of that purist, you know, where it was now to what does CrossFit look like today? What kind of trends have you seen? What way, what direction, you know, do you see CrossFit headed from, from where it came to now and, and maybe where you see it going? Man, I think, I think we could see, I mean, the games is kind of where everybody tries to make it, but I think that we could see things like CrossFit being in the Olympics, you know, with other sports. Maybe we start to incorporate downhill skiing into an event, you know. I don't know. I could see it as far as that. I could see, uh, I could see a, more of the medical side, and I know that Greg Glassman's kind of messing with that right now with CrossFit Health, um, trying to make things in life just easier and better for people without insurance or that that they could easily be fixed by their doctors by telling them to, hey, eat healthy and exercise versus here, here's a bunch of pills that you can take. Um, but I think like for us personally here, I think that our our next step is to go into more like the uh, rehab, uh, prehab section of it, right? Like um, recovery room, like you can have like cryotherapy or um, normatic systems to, to compress um, or even prehab stuff, teach you guys how to not injure yourselves before it happens, not wait until it happens or a small tweak and then try to rehab it. Sure. So I think that's where we're going as far as as far as like the, our future. Um, uh, and we're putting a little bit more emphasis on nutrition. Yeah, a lot on nutrition. Um, I feel like that was something that as a gym we were kind of lacking before. Um, and in my own personal experience, I had been crossfitting for quite a while and I was stronger and I knew I was getting stronger, but I wasn't seeing um, big changes in my body and it wasn't the physical a, changes. Yeah, like physical yeah um, And so it wasn't until I really cleaned up my eating um, That I started seeing really really big changes in my abilities and my body and so putting a lot more emphasis on that is Kind of what we're doing we're making yeah. sure our members know that yeah, you can you know work out five or six days a week, but 
a lot of your work needs to be in the kitchen too. So what does that look like when you say we're putting emphasis on it? Is it something where you're taking a piece in a class and just saying we're going to talk for a minute about nutrition? Is it a program, like a paleo challenge? What does that look like? We do, we do both. We've done, we've done challenges for years now, right? But we haven't done them consistently and we've kind of morphed it to where it's more about the athletes. We used to, we used to just have them come in and do a challenge, right? And then they would, uh, they would kind of get boasted. But we all know that everybody likes a little bit of cash, right? So <laughs> what we do now is we do $20 buy-in. We have a big pot. I think our last one was close to a thousand bucks that they could win, wow. right? For the, the, the highest body fat percentage loss. And uh, we try to do it quarterly now. We try to so do it quarterly, yeah. So we now we try to do focus it. on zone because. I just feel like if that's it's more for overall the and best kind of like nutrition plan. Macronutrients, right? Okay. Just like counting counting your macros. Um, but but so yeah, that's zone paleo, but more specific to just zone. 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 Yeah, I mean okay. we, we so still we'll do, do seminars um, for our athletes and our members. Um, we'll explain to them how zone works. We'll measure them. We'll take before and after photos. We will sit down and set out a spread. Show them how to measure food. We've done that. We'll explain to them what zone is, but I don't. I don't like to give my members um, meal plans yeah, because I anymore. feel like that's them becoming dependent on us. Sure. And I it's, really yeah. want to educate them. They're grown adults yeah. and I don't want them to have to pay for a meal plan and a meal plan. I want them to be able to have the tools and go out and make the right choices on their own. Yeah. We've gone, I mean, Mary's gone as far as going into somebody's pantry and kitchen with them taking out all the garbage stuff, putting in bags, going oh, wow. to donate it, and then helping them meal prep. Grocery shopping, making all, all the stuff, food, yeah, so. everything but putting the food in. Because we know it's so really going yeah. above and beyond. Yeah, wow. we know, well, we know it's a struggle. We, and people, I mean, people try to nickel and dime other people nowadays, right? And for us, it's, hey, we, you pay one membership fee, and then if we can help you in any way and we have the time, why not? It's not going to hurt us any, you know, so. It's awesome. Yeah. Since we're touching on nutrition, I've got to I've got to at least touch on this fact. Talk to me about Fit Aid. Okay. Oh God. So you guys have a special relationship with with Fit Aid. A little bit. I, I think. A little bit. More so, just kind of like the California thing, and just information that just shocked me that I had no idea about. Yeah. So so talk to me about about Fit Aid. How did you guys? Establish that relationship. How did it grow? What has it turned into today? So I think I think that we can kind of maybe thank Killcliff a little bit for this, right? So okay. when we were a smaller gym, we uh, I made a phone call and I was like, hey, and you Killcliff was the drink to drink, right? CrossFit Games, we're trying to get them in there and all that stuff. So I called and Killcliff was very small at the time, and and uh, and so I called and I ordered, and they're like, hey, we'll send you a free fridge for your Fit Aid since you guys are ordering cases for and your stuff. For Killcliff. Or sorry, for your for your Killcliff. Um, and so we were like, cool, yeah. And so we had all these cases of Killcliff that we had ordered, no, no fridge to keep them cold in, right? So I went out and bought a little fridge. And then I kept calling them, and I'm like, hey, guys, you know, we're still waiting on that fridge from you guys so that we can put more, more stuff in there. And so it just, it, they just kept kind of dragging their feet. It, and, and then when I finally picked up on it, I was like, okay, I see what's happening here. The little gems are not important right now because the big dogs are the ones that are taking priority. So then I said, thank you, no thank you. We stopped with Killcliff, right? So how long, how long was that? Like, that was, we started with... A couple of months or a year? I mean, how long did you... We, we did, had that we at our second with, box. Yeah, at our second gym. And I think it went for maybe about five to six months. Okay. We carried so you on. gave him an honest shot. We gave him an honest shot, yeah. And then, so then we ended not doing anything, right? We were like, hey, drink water. Uh, one day I'm driving to the gym, and uh, Tamara from Killcliffe calls me, and she's like, hey... From Fit Aid. Or sorry, from Fit Aid. Yeah, now I'm getting from, from Fit Aid. And she's like, hey... Uh, we want you see if you guys want to try out Fit Aid and whatnot. So somebody from Fit Aid Contact, contacted you guys. Contacted us, How right? cool is that? Yeah, and she was like, and I said, and I, I was kind of straight up with her. I said, I said, Tamara, check it out. I said, we did Kill Cliff, and we gave them a, a good shot. And I said, and and for us, we care about the small things, right? Like the small boxes and that type of stuff. We we support each other. And I said, Kill Cliff did us dirty, and they didn't support us essentially the way that they were said that they would. And I said, so if you guys are going to kind of do that, then I really don't want any part of it. And she said, no, 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 give us a shot. We'll take care of you, whatever you need, right? And so I said, fine. So I chatted with Mary, and we made the decision. We're like, all right, let's give them a shot. And, and so it kind of went from there. We ordered a few cases. I said, hey, they said, we're going to send you a fridge. Next day, we had a fridge, right? I was like, cool. So far, so good. And then 
ourselves, you know, we started we start we started drinking it personally, and I was like, man, this stuff's pretty good. And yeah. Got addicted, and so then we started telling our friends about it, and they started drinking it with us, and and uh, we ordered another fridge. We were like, hey, we need we need another fridge, and so we got another fridge from Fit Aid the very next day, and so our our orders come in as soon as we need them, right? And so it kind of snowballed. Our athletes love Fit Aid, and they they it's like crack. I mean, they can't live without <laughs> it. And uh, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. We make it very convenient for our members to get Fit Aid, um, and I think that that's part of like the original CrossFit OG kind of situation where a lot of our stuff is done on, done on the honor system, so our members can put their name down and say, "I need a case of Fit Aid," and they get a card with 24 circles. And every time they get a fit aid, they just mark it off. And that's just based on their integrity. integrity. Yeah. So it builds our bond a little bit with them. But it's, it's I mean, from there, it kind of snowballed, right? Um, we're, the, we're in the top three in the world sellers right now in our, in our <laughs> tiny little facility where there's gyms that have over 500 members. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. And so, I mean, in we the get... World. In, in the, the world. world. Yeah, yeah. In the world. Yeah. And so we uh, we get all types of goodies from Fit Aid now. We got cornhole boards. They send us a, a big, huge fridge, huge fridge for free. You know, the ice chest. Ice they give chest. Us, um, uh, sauces. Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Bluetooth speakers, speakers. Socks. All types of stuff. I heard a crazy story that you guys got Fit Aid shipped to you down in Mexico. <laughs> Is there any truth to that? I, we I contacted the Mex Mexico supplier for Fit Aid, um, and they never got back to me. But we uh, we go to Vegas in three days, and I called Fit Aid up, and they said, "Yeah, we'll send it to you right away." Uh, so how cool is that? We get I a got, case of I got, Fit Aid. I got an email. I, I sent them an email to see if they want because they sponsored our Throwdown every year, and uh, since the beginning, um, or no, not since the beginning, since like year what two or three. Two. And um, and I, I sent them an email. I was like, "Hey, I, I didn't figure I would have to say anything." I said, "Hey, do you guys think you guys could sponsor us?" And I loved how they started the email. They said, hey, you know, we have a lot of gyms that, we have over 500 requests a day for sponsorships for events. He said, um, but you guys are one of our best clients, so of course we're gonna sponsor you and anything you need, so. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and it's pretty cool that they, they take care of us, so. So it's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah, now it is, yeah. The customer yeah. service is great. Like, all yeah. the people we work with, um, we honestly have never had any problems with them. They're just, it's just a good company. Um, although they've gotten bigger, um, the fact that they're still doing something to support Affiliates. where they started yeah. makes a big difference. Um, we've had a RX bar in here and I felt like they were sellouts and I feel like their pricing, blah, 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 blah. They, you know, sold out to Costco and they gave us these horrible prices and the reason they got so big was because of the affiliates and they kind of kicked us to the curb, but Fit Aid hasn't done that. And so by offering the Fit Aid RX only to affiliates just kind of shows that, you know, they understand, they understand where that. they started from and where they're at. And it yeah. is because of the affiliates. I think, I think they, they keep themselves pretty grounded. You know, they're, they're not trying to get that, that head full of air that, That's they're, awesome. that they're the game's sponsor now and that type of stuff. So, yeah, it's a good company. So we always have a stock of generally at least 40 or 50 cases of Fit Aid. We sold, or we sold, or? <laughs> this no. month we'll go through 70 cases. Yeah, last month was 66 cases. So. That's so. crazy. <laughs> This is the Tri Cities. I mean, we're not in Seattle. Yeah, or Our FedEx delivery guy loves uh, us. Oh, he does love. He knows us by name. We give him Fit Aid as a reward. <laughs> like here, you're That's carrying it. Awesome. You get a, you get a few cans. So. Yeah. Lastly, let's kind of get into. It. I know we touched on it a little bit, but so let's let's look at kind of natural selection and the future and the Tri Cities and that kind of thing. Um, so first off, where do you see yourselves? Where do you see natural selection five years from now? Uh, you want to go? I, I don't know. All right, where do I start? So, um, I don't see us being in this facility anymore. I see us hopefully building something bigger. We were going to purchase. Didn't this you just build this place? <laughs> yeah. we, we're we we bursting did. at the seams. We did, but we're kind of we're kind of growing out of it, and um, I have nowhere else to put equipment for the athletes that we have. So, and I just ordered a bunch of more stuff, and so I got to figure out where to put it. Um, but I, I we're. We're looking to probably move out of this place within the next few years. We're going to purchase this place because we figured this was going to be big enough. We're good. This is where we're going to be at, but obviously not. <laughs> so we're thinking about building um, and hopefully just making it a big 100 by 100 foot square building. All floor space with a side office with where we can do our rehab, prehab stuff. Um, and uh, 
and kind of just calling that our our stomping final ground, our spot. finally spot. Yeah, building number five is where we want to be at. <laughs> so, um, and that way we can. What the, the end goal is for us to be able to coach multiple classes at the same time, like right, and that would sure. be where we transition into. Hey, we have Oli and CrossFit. You guys make your pick. Hey, we have gymnastics and CrossFit. Make a pick. Endurance running and CrossFit. So you're not interested in, say, like capping the membership and saying, this is our facility. We're only going to take 200 members. So it's, we, uh, we we're going to continue to grow? We or? thought about that, right? We kind of discussed that after a while because I've been doing a lot of research and I follow Jason Kalipa and he, I mean, that guy has a brainiac. He has like, a, like 26 gyms already. Um, and for us, I think the, like we mentioned earlier, the biggest thing is the community. And if we thought about opening in Richland, we thought about opening in Pasco, uh, Natural Selection CrossFit, but we don't want to split our community up. And I think that's why if they're willing to drive over here, then we're willing to have them, of course, right? and, and offer what we can. Um, and so that's why I think we'd rather just go bigger. And then once we're there, and if that's, if we're bu busting at the seams, then maybe we'll talk about opening up a second one. I know that we've also talked about opening up one in Hermiston. The governor contacted me and wanted us to open up one over there. And so the governor of Hermiston, well, the they, call him, they, they, they call him, they call him, they call him the, uh, the mayor. The okay. Governor of Hermiston. Yeah. <laughs> Technical terms. Yeah. Not the okay. governor, sorry. The mayor or not mayor, even the mayor. Okay, so what do they call him? I forget what they call him, but okay. yeah, the guy in charge of Hermiston. So still that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So right on CrossFit in the tri cities, the most recent gym just opened up. There's eight now in the tri cities mm -hmm. and it seems to be they're opening faster, not slower. Um, where do you see CrossFit going in, in just the Tri-Cities? Oh, I mean, we can have, I think we can have 50 gyms here. I mean... 50, really? I think so. We're, I, th I believe we're the biggest facility in town. And if every, every gym is at the same size that we're at, we're not even touching 1% of the Tri-Cities. I mean, there's plenty of people out there. That's why it's, it, it blows my mind sometimes when some people don't want to communicate with the other gyms or, you know, the community doesn't want to come together. It, does, it shouldn't matter, you know. Um, it, it, we're, you should, nobody should try and steal each other's members, or I think that's just kind of shady. But uh, I think that we should be trying to help each other grow. Because if if I help, you know, the other facilities attain more members, then more people know about CrossFit. The Kennewick gyms will be able to grow more, also, you know. So everybody. If, if we're thinking, it, yeah, if we're thinking as a as a business aspect, but. We always think of it more as like the community aspect. It should be a big community of gyms coming together, doing maybe a big throwdown, right, or something like that. And so, and I know that uh, we're talking to to uh, Todd Stone over at Twelve Stones CrossFit, and he's we 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 had thrown the the idea around last year about doing something like that, but he's doing a in-house competition, and then the top athletes out of each gym will come together and compete at their gym, which I think is a great idea, you know. Yeah. So yeah. The more gyms, the more CrossFit, CrossFit affiliated gyms, the better it is for everybody because it gets that CrossFit name out there. The gyms that are doing it right, that are you know encouraging that community, it's it's only going to make our Tri Cities better and more fit. You know, yeah. uh, six years ago, we were fifth in the nation of the most Beast. obese yeah, cities in the world, and so obviously this area needs it. Yeah. I agree. Has has the growth affected you guys in any way? Positively, negatively, both? From just the other... Tri-Cities? Yeah, just, just different gyms opening up. Have you seen anything maybe that, that has impacted? Not like really. I said, I e mean, either way? We, I mean, we tend to, and it's not nothing against any other facility, but we, we tend to get people from other facilities that come to us, and, and some of them tell us why, and, you know, and everybody runs their gym the way they want to, and, I mean, we run ours the way we want to, and... And I, like I said, we just keep it bare bones. This is what CrossFit preaches, and this is what we what we preach now. And so, it works for us. I mean, and I think if everybody was on the same playing field, it it would be better for everybody. If you were to if you were to say, you know, somebody's walking around, they're doing the gym shopping thing, or the the uh, you know, I've I've checked all the other CrossFit boxes out, and they give you that question, what do you guys do, you know, differently, or is there something that you do? that you would say, you know, I know all the other gyms and this is the the thing that we oh do God. best. Our community. It, yeah, I think that's bar none the community. I mean... I think it's, um, Leo and I personally, we, we only like to get um, five to seven members a month. 
because we don't want a huge up influx in members because we don't have time to establish that relationship with them. So when we get 50 members, um, that's not the kind of gym that we are. We want yeah. like five to seven, you know, we're growing continuously. We don't want these huge influx of members because I, can, I, don't, I won't be able to know your name. I won't be able to know your wife's name. I won't be able to know anything about you, what your goals are. And that, I think that makes a difference. Yeah, I think our, our, the way that we do, the way that we kind of run our facility, it's like we, we try to put our roots in a little deeper into their, not per se personal lives, but into their lives so that you know, they're invested in us the way that we're invested in them. Awesome. Yeah. So. Very cool. Where can people find you guys if they need to get hold of you or they want to find out more about Natural Selection? Facebook. I mean, Natural Selection or nscrossfit.com. You can go there. We have all our info, all of our, our personal infos on there also. Um, what else are we on? Instagram. Instagram. Twitter. Twitter. We're on all the social media. Um, People can just come in, right? Always. We're usually always here, uh, except for Sundays. Yeah. But yeah. All of our information. Most people Google us. We always ask, and people are like, yeah, Google. Google. Google rules the world, man, for search engines. (laughs) Okay. Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for taking a ton of time out and doing this. Thank Um, you. I know this is uh, is taking a lot of time out. You guys got to go to a wedding and all that, but. uh, I think this is valuable information that, that people who are interested in, in uh, natural section CrossFit can come and kind of get a little bit of glimpse about what you guys yeah. are all about. So Perfect, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks thank so you. much. All right. Hey, CrossFitters. That is the end of the interview with Natural Selection CrossFit. Leo and Mary were awesome to sit down and talk to, and I really hope you guys enjoyed listening to that interview as much as I did uh, and chatting with them. Getting to hear some super cool stories about how Leo started uh, back in the original box in California, uh, how he took his level one from Greg Glassman himself, and meet some really cool um, athletes like Annie Thorstadter and Jason Klepa. Uh, fascinating story, a uh, really cool background. Uh, getting to listen to his journey of how he moved up here to the Tri-Cities and sort of uh, got involved with natural selection and sort of how they progressed over the years. Um, really, really cool stuff, uh, and uh, hopefully you guys had an enjoyable time listening to that. If you are interested in finding out more information about Natural Selection CrossFit, you can find out uh, how to contact them on our website, or you can go to naturalselectioncrossfit.com, and they have all of their contact information there. Um, So I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I know I certainly did. That's it. I'm Jason Witt, and this is tcboxcrawl.com.